the uh, the next area that we're going to discuss is wound complications, and um, we're going to discuss uh, the area of morbid obesity. This is we could describe as a BMI greater than 40, and what effect does morbid obesity, in fact, have on arthroplasty outcomes? And these are four potential um, uh, answers to that question. And if we look to the literature, um, one can see that it has been documented that there is an increased incidence of radiolucent lines as you follow the obese patient out further uh, in the two and five and beyond year mark, uh, probably due to excessive loading uh, in that population of the interface. Uh, and you can see here on the right, this is a paper that was done uh, looking at the morbidly obese uh, patient, and you can see there was a higher incidence documented of radiolucent lines in the postoperative radiographs. There are many risk factors listed here that can occur, that can present uh, with increased uh, wound complications. And just to run through these for review, certainly diabetes mellitus, vascular compromise in any fashion, inflammatory arthritis, immunosuppressive medications, particularly cortisone, can influence healing, use of tobacco, poor nutritional status, an albumin as representative of nutritional status, less than 3.5. Uh, total lymphocyte count is something that's being popularized more recently in looking at nutritional status, perioperative anemia, and again, obesity as being a cause of potential wound healing problems. Um, local factors, uh, skin incisions, very important in how you approach a knee that has had previous surgery. Uh, we want to provide a skin bridge, uh, particularly of five to six centimeters if possible. We want to, if possible, and there is a previous incision that we have to cross, we do not want to create an angle of less than 60 degrees because that resultant segment of bone, triangular segment of bone, will be at risk uh, for potential slough. And therefore, if you can, particularly the transverse incisions, cross them at a perpendicular 90 degree angle. Other, other risk factors, patients with severe deformity, uh, patients who have adherence of their skin to the deep structures and poor local blood supply, all are risk factors for increased wound complications. As a rule, um, don't undermine the skin away from the subcutaneous tissue. Uh, that can devascularize the skin and lead to increased uh, wound healing problems. So subcutaneous flaps through the subcutaneous la layer is important. Excessive um, traction, trying to do less invasive procedures can compromise blood flow to the skin. Uh, long surgical time, long tourniquet time, all can be a problem. And then wound healing is aggravated by hematoma or infection. Um, and early uh, knee flexion beyond 40 degrees in the high-risk knee, pushing a knee that's very stiff and where there is problems uh, of the soft tissues and particularly the skin, by pushing that knee to excessively in flexion will potentially dehiss and destroy the wound healing. Um, <clears throat> again, the patients at risk are the multi-operated knee patient, patients with prior infection, um, and again, persistent drainage is a problem uh, in a wound, and if that continues to happen, uh, that wound is at risk and needs to be dealt with expeditiously. Um, on examination, wound problems present, as all of you know, with wound breakdown, erythema, warmth, and drainage are problematic, as well as an eschar in the periincisional area. Um, Radiographs are useful, but again, we with wound problems, we're looking at the actual problem uh, on the examination of the patient. I have not found radionuclide studies uh, to be particularly helpful, and aspiration is important to rule out a deep infection if the wound starts to be a problem. And again, angiography uh, one can do to improve, but to look at where the gastroc, where your blood flow is better, 
should a gastroc flap be necessary to provide blood flow to a, a wound slough area. Um, <clears throat> Non-operative treatments, local wound care antibiotics, uh, this is uh, well known. Um, those patients um, who have significant loss of soft tissue, wound problems, coverage, I would highly recommend that a plastic surgery consultation be done early. And then if there's full thickness loss, that a medial or lateral gastrocnemius rotational flap can be used to bring soft tissue coverage over the knee that is deficient in coverage. It's important to uh, provide soft tissue coverage in the knee to prevent uh, wound breakdown uh, and possible exposure of the implant itself. Uh, this next case uh, defines a obese woman, 227 pounds. She has, an, this is a serious uh, patient, serious problem with many problems, including diabetes mellitus. Uh, she's had uh, revision surgery for loose components. She's had obviously an extensor mechanism uh, injury uh, or disruption with a significant lag um, and, and high writing of a patella to document that. She now has gross purulence a completely absent uh, torn extensive mechanism on exposure of the knee. Um, the knee is grossly infected. Um, she's had a cement spacer. She's got enterococcus in her cultures, which is a very resistant bug. Um, the wound drains um, are placed, and she still has persistent problems despite intravenous antibiotics. So obviously, multi multi uh, morbidity, multi-comorbidities in terms of management of this infection in a very, very devastating problem. And what are your options at this point? Knee fusion, primary repair with a hinge total knee is going to be a problem. You, you really um, you can't exp you can't repair these extensive mechanisms completely disrupted and destroyed. Revision with an allograft. This is a grossly infected knee with chronic infection. Allograft will just promote increased infection in that setting. And again, the patient has failed to breed months and is well beyond that. So the knee fusion is the correct answer in this case. And there it is. And 64% and of people got it right. Um, and I think yeah, there is some controversy here, but that I think is the way to go in multiply failed uh, attempts to, to reconstruct this knee and deal with the infection. And arthrodesis is the best way to go. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.